don't think it's chaos. Well, obviously, I think it's gone badly wrong in the hospital. The doctor just been at the hospital, and they're pulling the fist out there and trying to get him out. Is there wrong with that, Harry? Well, there is, because they're the wrong people. Um, there are about nine, between 9 and 15 killed uh, by the kind of people in the hospital area. They're old women, children, and something as well. And they're still going up there. I mean, they're, they're pink women full of bodies. And the creek on up there with bodies. Yeah, uh, and Mount. Mount involved, is it? Well, Mount was down there, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think from the... But the part there is going to upset me, he's going up to see the commander about all the old things. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He was laughing at that. Who was? Oh, was he? Yeah. He was dressing the team for a long time. Interesting. Well, that's right. Look at the dirty boy. Well done. And he said, you know, this is what you have. Yeah. Dura Column Kill Derry A crossroads of ancient ulcer, a site of conflict and siege, dubbed London Derry by the colonists. But a hundred years ago, Derry City Council voted allegiance to Dáil Éireann. The majority of its citizens wanted to live in a united, independent Ireland. It was not to be. Ireland was partitioned. Derry was cut off from its natural hinterland of County Donegal. The city council was abolished. The new unionist government of Northern Ireland, the Orange State, manipulated the electoral system to produce a unionist majority council in a nationalist majority city. Through five decades, Derry became synonymous with gerrymandering, sectarian discrimination, unemployment and poverty. And then in 1968, Derry became the cradle of a new movement, the Civil Rights Movement. The world witnessed RUC brutality against civil rights marchers, the Battle of the Bogside and the creation of Free Derry. Repression met resistance. And in August 1971, the Union's regime, with the full backing of the British Tory government in London, imposed internment without trial. That internment week, the British Army's Parachute Regiment killed 11 people in the Ballymurphy Massacre in Belfast. The same Parachute Regiment savagely beat peaceful anti-internment protesters on McGilligan Strand, County Derry, on the 22nd of January 1972. Then came Bloody Sunday, 30th of January 1972. Thousands of people gathered for the first major civil rights march against internment. It was banned by the Unionist government, but as they assembled at Cregan, the atmosphere was calm and determined. They marched towards the old city, but their way was blocked by British Army barricades at the edge of the bog side. Most of the marchers turned towards Free Derry Corner for the meeting. There was some minor rioting at the barricades and the British Army responded with tear gas and water cannon, by then a regular occurrence in Derry. But this day was different. Without warning, the soldiers of the Parachute Regiment opened fire on the crowd. With their high-powered rifles, they shot people at close range. Some were killed outright, some were gravely wounded, some were shot as they lay on the ground or sought shelter and tried to help others. The firing of the paros echoed through the bog side, and when it was over, 13 men and boys were dead. Another man died later from his injuries. Immediately, the British government lies began. They told the world the dead men were bombers and gunmen. They set up the Widgery Tribunal to whitewash the murders. But the evidence against them was damning. The commander of the Parachute Regiment in Derry, Colonel Derek Wilford, was rewarded the Order of the British Empire by the Queen of England. The people of Ireland and people worldwide came out in solidarity with Derry. The British Embassy in Dublin was burned to the ground. The old Orange State was doomed and within weeks direct rule from London was introduced. The long march towards justice and truth for Derry went on. The long journey to Irish unity, equality and lasting peace continues.
Bloody Sunday was one of the darkest moments in the history of our city. British soldiers ravaged through the bogside and gunned down innocent civilians who were marching against internment and for civil rights. But the people of Derry are strong and resilient. For five decades the Bloody Sunday families have campaigned for truth and justice and successfully challenged the whitewash of the Widgery Inquiry. And they did June 2010 was a turning point in the city's history. The victims and their families were vindicated when the British Prime Minister apologised and described the killings as unjustified and unjustifiable. This weekend, as we mark 50 years on, Derry is a very different place and an ever-changing city. My generation has had huge opportunities in front of us. The right to a first-class education, to have a decent home, to shape our future and to live in peace. That is what we want to build for this city and for future generations. So once again we stand with the Bloody Sunday families, many of them from a new generation in solidarity. Future generations will know the story of what happened on Bloody Sunday. Building peace, creating opportunities and a dairy in Ireland that puts the interests of ordinary workers and families first. That is the city's legacy. Hello, my name is Tony Doherty. I'm the chair of the Bloody Sunday Trust in Derry. Uh, and I'm standing in the Museum of Free Derry, um, which is built adjacent to where the massacre of Bloody Sunday took place. Um, the history of the, the family struggle and the Bloody Sunday justice campaign is housed within uh, these premises and it has pride of place. For the best part of the last 50 years, the Bloody Sunday families have campaigned very uh, vigorously to establish the Truth and Justice campaign to clear the, the, the names of their the, of their loved ones, um, to have the the despised Widgery report overturned, and to bring to justice those who were responsible for the uh, murders and attempted murders on on Bloody Sunday. Um, so we have fought for quite a long time. Um, in, in Derry, we took over by and large from the role of, of Sinn Féin in terms of the annual commemoration and then it became a family's commemoration and then a campaign commemoration and all that history is, is, is lodged here and we're very very proud uh, of it. Um, as many as many will know, the, the, the good names of our, uh, of our loved ones were besmirched by the British Army and the British Government and that was part of the uh, compelling circumstances for the families to get together on the 20th anniversary and begin the long campaign to have all that uh, changed and overturned. So I am proud to stand here today and say that we have uh, changed history. We have changed the, the official history of the deaths of our loved ones and uh, that history is, is by and large seen as a, as a contribution towards peace and prosperity in the city of Derry and beyond and as an example of, uh, of peace and reconciliation and truth finding that has been uh, emulated in our countries. The role of the Trust itself is to support the families, to preserve and conserve uh, the history of this community, hence the Museum of Free Derry, and we're all very proud that we own it, lead it and have developed it. I'm standing here in Derry in amongst the streets where the Civil Rights March had travelled on that crisp Sunday afternoon on the 30th of January 1972. As the marchers made their way through the streets of Derry 50 years ago with placards, banners and a determination for civil rights, they were met with the gunfire of the British Army. Bloody Sunday was a massacre of innocence. The British state feared an end to second class citizenship and an equal future for all. For the right to a home, for the right to a job, for the right to vote. That generation helped to shape ours. The winds of change are upon us and the momentum for a new Ireland and the demand for an Ireland that guarantees universal rights and equal opportunities for all citizens is growing. On the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, I want to pay tribute to the Bloody Sunday families. Your determination and your dignity over the past 50 years has been remarkable. It is because of your tireless efforts over many decades that the truth of what happened on Bloody Sunday is now known throughout the world. In 2022, we owe it to the victims of Bloody Sunday and their families to work to build a new and a better future for all citizens, one that will never allow the injustices of the past to be repeated. The days of rights being denied are gone and they are not coming back. Those who continue to hark back to the days of nationalists being second class citizens and being denied opportunities in life will not succeed in dragging our society backwards. 
all across this island. This is a huge time of change and of opportunity and we must seize that. So as we remember the 14 innocent civilians murdered on Bloody Sunday and their families' incredible quest for justice, let us work to build a better future for all of our children, a future where equality and rights and justice are guaranteed in a new and a great Ireland.
50 years on from the travesty and heartbreak of Bloody Sunday, we stand with the victims' families and the community that bore the unspeakable loss of 14 innocent lives. Innocent fathers, husbands, sons, uncles, brothers, friends, gunned down by the British Army on the streets of their hometown, the irrepressible town of Derry. Today we are inspired by the determination and resilience of all those who have campaigned tirelessly for truth and for justice. Their dignity stands in stark contrast to the shameful behaviour of the British system that has for decades resisted, covered up and sought to thwart the families at every turn. Their courage outshines the shame of the current Tory government in London that today seeks to provide amnesty to the British soldiers that carried out the atrocities of Bloody Sunday and all those who perpetrated British state murder in Ireland. There is no support for this shameful amnesty on this island or internationally. It flies in the face of truth and justice. It flies in the face of reconciliation and the new future that so many of our people from all communities, identities and backgrounds are working to build together and for each other. In the same spirit of those who marched for civil rights, those who live every day for our new future of respect and progress will overcome. We refuse to be dragged back to the dark days of the past by those who offer only conflict and disharmony. This generation is moving on. We reach for tomorrow and look to better days. The days of second-class citizenship and discrimination must be consigned to history. In our new Ireland, there can be no barriers to what you can achieve, no limits to high you, how high you can climb, and no boundary to how far you can travel in life. Our new Ireland will be home for everyone, home where we celebrate each other when we're at our strongest and protect each other when we fall behind. Today we transcend old divisions and a new dawn is breaking. Despite the challenges we now face together, this is a decade of real opportunity, of hope and excitement. A decade in which we can fully realise the full potential of our island. In so many ways, the enduring spirit of Derry's people epitomises the vision of a brighter future for all of Ireland. Derry is a city that will no longer be left behind, a city rising in unison with Ireland's new generation stepping forward to claim its destiny, to demand better, to achieve everything previously denied. The expansion at McGee University is a powerful symbol of all the possibilities that lie ahead. Out of traumatic and harrowing past, Derry emerges to a future brimming with energy and positivity. As we live through the dying days of partition, the winds of change blow all round us. We continue the journey to a new and united Ireland, an Ireland where workers, families and community comes first. These are the moments when history is made and the future is shaped. It's time for each and every one of us to seize the opportunity. Mar is law nua e, aum nua, is re nua e, igor era tola coonanus, agus kyartish, a to ser o ider yalu, era le kyarta tora fejula goktina iri lo susail, fui huvnus, agus rahunus. This is our moment, this is our time. Let's grasp it together. Fifty years ago, on the streets of Derry, 14 innocent people were murdered by the British Army. Today we cast off the shackles of oppression and with hope, with confidence, we remember them. We will never forget them and we won't rest until they have truth and justice. We'll work night and day for an Ireland of equals. That is the very best way to honour their memories.